So, we saw in the last class the link between energy and quality of life. We talked about the human development indicator. Uh, today, we are going to look at uh, the e inequality, how do we measure inequality and what do we understand, what is energy inequality. So, the two questions that we need to ask are how do we measure inequality, why is it important and um, any society or any development that we have, we would like to see that the benefits of that development go uniformly as far as possible to the entire population. And if you have a society which has more inequality, then of course, that is not necessarily from a long term, that is not necessarily sustainable. So, if you look at around us, you will find that in general, um, inequality, we talk about inequality in terms of inequality of income. So, for instance, if you see, uh, if you look at this is from an inequality report, you will find that the top 10 percent of the population, what percentage of the income do they own and you will find that in uh, India top 10 percent accounts for about 55 percent of the total income of the GNP. And similarly, you find Europe is relatively uh, less unequal in the, because the top 10 percent owns about 37 percent. Uh, so, this is this gives you one possible way in to look at inequality, see how much the top 10 percent own in terms of the income. Uh, we may also look at how this share has been changing over a period of time. So, if you look at this data, this plot shows you over a period of time from 1980 onwards, how the, these numbers are changing. And you will find that in, a, in most of the cases, the top 10 percent, the share of their income has actually been increasing at a faster rate than the rest of it. So, that means that the rich are getting richer and uh, of course, this means the, the, this me means in many cases that the inequality has sort of increased and you can see in the Indian case, if you look at this plot, you can see how this has been going up and then it sort of uh, plateaued at this point. This is the kind of shape. Uh, the if you look at in this is again from the inequality report, uh, you find that if you look at the total inequality and the income growth um, uh, in terms of the different income groups, you find that the richest have been growing at the fastest rate. And uh, so, it means that of course, this is not this is not sort of surprising, but this is it is quite striking in terms of the top 1 percent captured, top 1 percent captured 27 percent of the total growth if you look at from 1980 to 2016. So, this is uh, in terms of inequality, if we want to measure this and we would like to look at uh, inequality in income, we would also like to look at what is the inequality in electricity use or energy use. So, one of the metrics that we can do is we can actually uh, take the entire population and arrange the population in terms of lowest to highest. So, if we talk in terms of income, we take the lowest x percentage, lowest 1 percent, then 2 percent cumulatively, how much of the population, if you take the lowest 10 percent, how much of the income does the lowest 10 percent have and so on. So, we have a plot and that plot is called the Lorentz curve on the x axis go to 0 to 1 or to 100 percent and on the y axis also go to 0 to 1. The x axis shows the percentage, cumulative percentage, the lowest x percent, lowest percent and the y axis shows the cumulative share, cumulative share of income, energy, whatever we are, income 
or if we want to plot energy, right? And so, if we make this here, now if we had a real, if we had equality, complete equality, if we take any point here as x, the minimum x percentage of, if you take the fraction x, x going from 0 to 1 and you want to know what percentage of the income, if you had a complete equality, then the 5, if you take 5 percent of the population, it would account for 5 percent of the income. If you take 20 percent, it would account for 20 percent. So, we, the line that we would have would be y is equal to x. This is where you have a complete, it is a 45 degree line and this is when you have complete equality. On the other hand, if we had a set of uh, different individuals where everyone had zero income and only one individual had all the income, then you would have a curve which would go something like this and then go here. In actual practice, we would have something like this. And so, this deviation that we have from the 45 degree line shows us the amount of inequality in the system. And so, the, this curve that we have is called, this is called the Lorentz curve and the Lorentz curve, if we see L x is the proportion of the income earned by the lowest x proportion of the population. So, obviously, by definition L 0 will be 0, 0 percentage of the population will have 0 percentage of the income and L 1 means 100 percent of the population will have 100 percent of the income. And since by definition this is a cumulative increase and the cumulative amount, this will be an increasing function. The extreme case is where L x is equal to x, this is complete absolute equality all earn the same. And absolute inequality is where L x is equal to 0 for 0 less than equal to x less than 1 and that one individual earns the all the income. So, in between this is what you will have the curve and this is how uh, the curve would look. So, in this what we have is we define a coefficient called the Gini coefficient and the Gini coefficient is defined as the ratio of these areas, the area A divided by A plus B. So, as you can see this Gini coefficient will be between 0 and 1 with 0 representing absolute equality and 1 representing absolute inequality. Anything in between the lower the Gini coefficient the more equal is the society. And so, let us look at some of these numbers. How do we compute this? So, as we said Gini coefficient is a by a plus b and obviously, a plus b because this index was 1, if you remember uh, the unit uh, units were 1 on the x axis and 1 on the y axis and we have a 45 degree line. So, the total area of a plus b is just half and uh, Gini coefficient can also be written as g is equal to x minus L x d x. And uh, you can, if we use, we can approximate it, if we, there are points and we use the trapezoidal rule, you can also show very easily that this is equal to, if you have points x i and y i, we can write this as the area uh, in this, in this form. And so, we given a set of data 
you can calculate what is the Gini coefficient. Now, just to show you some of the Lorentz curves, uh, and you can see that uh, the kind of different uh, cumulative proportion of the, uh, you can see that these are different. Obviously, if you compare this curve with this, you will find that this one shows more inequality as compared to this. This will have a higher value of the Gini coefficient. Um, we have plots and you can, uh, if you just Google, you will find maps which will show you different kinds of Gini coefficients for different countries. And uh, so, of course, some, kind of, some regions are, uh, have relatively more equality. For instance, if you look at Europe and if you look at the Scandinavian countries, and then there are other regions which are relatively more uh, une unequal. Um, so, just to give you an example, if you take this data, this is from a paper for the U.S. electricity, U.S. household electricity consumption, and this gives you uh, the cumulative proportion uh, of population and the cumulative proportion of the electricity consumption. One can take this plot, uh, one can take this and plot it and draw the Lorentz curve, and you can also from this get the Gini coefficient for this. Um, if you look at for the world, uh, this was done uh, uh, in the global energy assessment, and you can see that the uh, final energy and the electricity use, you can see that there is it is a fairly uh, significant inequality. So, for instance, if you look at from this side, if you look at the poorest 10 percent, right? If you look at the richest 10 percent, you will find that the richest 10 percent consume more than 40 percent of the world's electricity and the final energy. While if you look at the poorest um, 50 percent, you will find that the poorest 50 percent consume less than the less than 10 percent of the total uh, cumulative uh, energy. So, the, uh, when we talk in terms of the overall energy scenario, there is a very significant uh, inequality and distribution in terms of the access to energy, in terms of the electricity. And as we develop uh, these inequalities, uh, the plan is to try and reduce these inequalities. And so, similar kinds of, so for instance, now this is from a paper by Jacobson in energy policy, and you can see that the electricity, cumulative electricity consumption, residential electricity consumption, uh, you will find that relatively, if you see Norway as a Gini coefficient of 0.19, much more equal than when you see Kenya, large proportions do not have access to electricity. Gini coefficient is 0.87, and it's only this, which is and similar kinds of things uh, you can see. Uh, we had developed similar kinds of uh, uh, using the data from the NSSO. We tried to develop Lorentz curves for India, and you can see that over a period of time, the inequality uh, in terms of electricity use has been declining. And this has been due to our efforts in terms of uh, providing access and providing uh, electricity and often providing subsidized electricity for low income users. And you will see that in the case of urban, it is uh, even better in terms of the Lorentz curve. And so this shows you um, the way in which we can map the inequality in terms of the Lorentz curves. And from this, we can then calculate what are the Gini coefficients. And there are papers where uh, the overall um, inequality in the carbon uh, has been also mapped, and this is called the carbon Gini. Uh, in doing this, in this paper, in Tang et al., they have actually taken not just in a particular year, but they have taken the cumulative share of the historical uh, emissions. And you can see very clearly um, that the emission trajectory is such that it is the and the, it is the richest 10, 15 percent which has actually been contributing for a significant proportion of the cumulative uh, CO2 emissions. Of course, please remember in all of these calculations, we take every country as an average. 
there is an inequality within the country. But it, these inequalities, when we talk in terms of an overall problem in terms of uh, CO2 emission reduction uh, and we are trying to get the entire world to come to some agreement, these are the issues which come in when uh, we look at uh, how to get an agreement, how to reduce the CO2 emissions uh, and to have and so that is why we have gone in for instead of having a mandatory sort of emission, uh, every country has come up with a voluntary uh, declaration of what they can do and that is how we have made an agreement in Paris and we are moving forward with that. Um, these are again um, different kinds of uh, countries on that carbon genie and this gives you some kind of. So, um, these are some of the references where you can find more details. What we have done today is we have looked at uh, the metrics for measuring equality or inequality. We talked about the Lorentz curve and uh, we also looked at the Gini coefficient. In the tutorial, we will give you some examples of equations and how you can make some calculations so that you can calculate the Gini coefficient in terms of income, in terms of energy and this is something which we can use when we talk of in terms of different development strategies and uh, decide on what kind of energy requirements are required to remove the inequalities.